Hi everyone and welcome to the 11th tutorial in the Python 3.6 series. In this video we're going to be discussing functions and so we're actually going to do something in the end that's very similar to what we did before with the Fibonacci series except for this time we're going to do it so that you can input whatever amount you want for the max limit where before we had it statically assigned. So first I'm just gonna define a basic function so that I can show exactly what we're dealing with. So basically the way you start it off is you do def and then whatever you want your name of your function to be and then this is going to be an argument that's like your input. The way functions work is sort of like if you ever did it in grade school where you have like a chart and you have your input X's and you have your output Y's and so it might have been like input 4 output 6 input 6 output 8 and something like that and so they would have that entire chart and then you had to fill in the blanks it's kind of like that except for you're defining what the function is so if I just do something like x equals x plus 2 print x and so you'd think okay we've got our x we're doing x plus 2 and then we're gonna print x but then if I hit f5 see what happens absolutely nothing so turns out that we need to actually call our function and we can do something like this where we do we just type in add to and then we can put in whatever number we want so let's say three and so we get five like we expect that's how a function works and so now we can move on to the Fibonacci series which is just going to be a little bit more complex. And so we're going to define our Fibonacci function again. And this time we're going to do it just like we did before with the simultaneous assignment. A becomes 0, B equals 1. And then after that we're doing a while loop. And so a is our starter value that's starting at 0 and then X is going to be our max limit that's the largest number that we're going to look at when we're doing the Fibonacci numbers and what this is right here is it's going to print a every single time and it is <coughs> print is actually a function of its own and so what we're showing here is we're adding an additional argument so the first argument is a and then the second argument is n end and we're setting it to an open string with just one space in between and we'll show what that's doing exactly in a little bit And so this is exactly like we did last time we did the Fibonacci series where A becomes the previous term and B becomes A plus B. After that, what we're going to do again is we are going to call the function and we're going to set the maximum to 2000 or the argument is going to be 2000. And so you can see it prints it out all correctly up to 1597 because if we add an additional number it overflows past 2000. <coughs> and so back to this print statement. Normally, let's see what happens if we remove this. See, now they're all vertical. They're all they each have a new line. So what we're actually doing with this is normally what n does 
end is normally end is normally this. That's the default. And so we see it does all new lines, but if we clear that out, then we make it so it's just a space. And so end is basically what you do at the end of each input. So the normal thing is to make it a new line every time, but we can change it so that it's just a space. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about what is really going on with this stuff. So if I type in print fib, what do you think is going to happen? Well, actually what happens is it prints out this weird thing and basically what that is is that's the object which stores what the function means and so we can also do reassignment so let's say we don't want it to be called fib anymore we can just do f equals fib and then we could do f 2000 and we'll get rid of this for now. And you can see it does it again. F became fib just using F equals that. And so let's say we want to, let's try F, F with 100 inside. So what do you guys think is going to happen this one? Because it's f of 100, or f with the argument 100, and then we're printing it out. So you think it might output what the function is outputting or something like that, but that's actually not what happens. It prints none, because that's just the way that functions and printing works. And so... Let's say if we did want something like this where we're printing, we're going to have to change things up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new list called result. And this is going to stay the same. The while loop is going to stay the same. And we'll remove the print for now. And what we're going to do is every single round we're going to add in the the previous um, a and we're just going to append it to the list so we can store it for later and then what we're going to do at the end is we're going to return the list and so what this means <coughs> is we can now do something like this where instead of needing to do print or needing to put a print inside of the function we can just do f of 100 or f with the argument 100 and we print it out and then it doesn't work. Give me a second. Sorry, I wasn't sure why that wasn't working and it turns out that I just had the return was in there but it needed to be one level below the while loop because the return comes at the end and it was returning on the first pass of the while loop and so it wasn't allowed to complete the entire thing. So what we need to do is we return at the end after doing all of this and the results list is full. And then we take this and we print it out. So we do that. And then it prints the entire list up until 100. And it goes to 89 before going past 100. That is going to conclude it for today's video on functions. In the next video, we're going to be talking a bit more about the arguments and we're going to discuss more of this stuff like I did with a print statement where we change the default arguments and we are also going to learn how to set default arguments.